I want to extend a welcome to our two panelists here. We're very fortunate to have the CEOs of, of two very exciting companies with us. Um, and I've asked them to prepare a short comments to orient us to their products and their services. Our first speaker will be Cédric Ponson, and he is the CEO of Vivendi Mobile Entertainment Group, and he's going to tell us a bit about Zauza, which is their, their paid service, uh, on-demand video and mobile and entertainment service. Please uh, begin. Okay, thanks, Rob, for the, the introduction. Um, I just divided my quick presentation in two parts uh, because I used to work uh, uh, in uh, many industry before uh, moving into the multi-platform uh, entertainment distribution. I spent five years working with Rio in the music industry before he also moved to a more multi-platform entertainment. <clears throat> and I just wanted to share with you, I would say, some advice. We French people, we sometimes say uh, uh, and edict a lot of rules, but it's more an advice of uh, what I've learned and what can be adapted to the big move, uh, the TV and the movie and the, uh, the series industry are uh, about to, uh, to, uh, to live today. So my learnings from the FMCG industry that I can probably uh, share with you today uh, regarding what's happening uh, in the TV industry is, uh, of course, the, the client is king. So we, when I moved to the music industry, I was very surprised uh, that all the discussion were more about the content, the artist, etc., which is, of course, very important. And I was also very surprised not to have a lot of customer survey, customer understanding of really, of really what the people want to listen, how they want to listen. So first advice is definitely, and, and Rob was uh, telling that perfectly well in, in his uh, introduction, at the end of the day, if you want to push something that the client doesn't want, he will find a way to definitely pass through the system and get what he wants. So the client is king, uh, absolutely uh, not to forget. The second thing is uh, the USP. Uh, USP has been uh, invented by Procter & Gamble in the 60s. Very, very often uh, it's forgotten by all the, the industries. It's having one selling use of a unique selling proposition. One thing to tell, uh, which is always uh, the success of the distribution company and uh, the marketing company. The third rule uh, for me that is absolutely critical to all the industries and that I've learned also uh, <coughs> within Danone, within L'Oréal, etc., is cannibalizing yourself may save your life. So it's always very funny to see how the media industry, and I say funny, it's not so funny, but the media industry, the content industry, has a lot of difficulty compared to what, for example, L'Oreal is doing for years, to cannibalize itself. Starting to create the new business inside the company rather than outside. Because when you are in an industry and the, the market is uh, moving very quickly, you can imagine that you have thousands of people outside of your company that starts to try to see how they can attack your business. And at the end of the day, the story is always the same. It's better to be attacked by yourself than being attacked by an outside uh, startup. And I say that and you can, uh, you can see it. It was the same in the telco industry, the same in the music industry, and it may be the same uh, in the uh, industry that is at the MIP team. Last but not least, so it's a famous uh, sentence from the FMCG uh, companies, it's not because there is a hole in the market that there is a market in the hole. So it's also to pay a lot of attention to what the people want to get and not to spend too, many, too much time to follow, uh, I would say, wrong innovation or uh, wrong road uh, to make uh, business. And, and you can take probably uh, the different uh, hours you spend in the day by trying to follow sometimes a uh, wrong ID just because you think that there is a hole in the market. So just very, very simple from the FMCG, telco industry, so a lot of uh, good success uh, in the 2000 uh, years when I was uh, uh, running the marketing of SFR. I think what I've learned and what can be transferred to uh, this industry 
is that the digital consumption is very much driven by subscription, not by a la carte. The reason being that where probably you are in a physical environment, you, you want to get things, uh, you want to get products by pieces. When you are on the digital side, you just don't want to think or be completely overstressed any time you do something, which means that the subscription is just distressing you by getting the product. It has been the success in the telco industry. It has been the success in a lot of uh, other industry. And when you even think about the music industry, of course, people could say that uh, iTunes were, is a la carte and is probably one of the biggest players. But when you really think what iTunes is, for me, it's more a subscription. You are in a closed environment. You give your credit card once. So anytime you want to get music, you have only one place to go, one click. And then you are completely distressed, which means that it looks much more like a subscription talking from a consumer point of view. Of course, a lot of uh, digital companies, uh, starting by the, the, the telecom industry, were thinking that the devices were less important than the tariff and the services in the early 2000s. At the end of the day, what people get in their hand, what people are watching in front of us, is the device. And I think Apple and Steve Jobs have uh, proven that the simple user experience within the device is absolutely uh, key to the success. Getting the right technology is a must have. So we probably, we have uh, pretty few people uh, in this room uh, that are CTO or people like that or developers. You can probably be very successful with the right technology and involving you yourself, even as a manager, as a content producer in the technology now is absolutely critical, absolutely critical. And you can say that all the top guys that are so successful in, in the digital world, they all come from the technical environment. Try to stay at your place on the value chain. So that's so funny when uh, you move from one industry to another. So everything is going to be changed on the value chain and people want to move from their place and try to get something on another place. It takes two or three years and then at the end of the day, every, everyone is back at his place trying to create value where he was at the beginning. But the temptation, and you can see with the connected TV at the moment, same story like we had on the telecom industry in the 2000s where we had the, <coughs> the music industry uh, also five years ago. Wall garden, nothing to say, uh, is probably not the solution at the end of the day could be at the beginning, but uh, so many things have failed, but it was already uh, well explained in the, uh, in the former presentation of Rob. Learning from the music industry. So you can see a lot of uh, pirate player in front of only one in front that is trying to monetize the music. If you fear, you will miss the market. It was inter it's interesting to see what's happening in France at the moment that uh, the, the, the guy from TF1 was explaining. A lot of fear. Connected TV arrives on the market. You start by fearing how those uh, new digital things will attack my market. And the time you, you spend on fearing is the time that you would better use to try to create an answer to the consumer. If there is no margin, there is no market. It seems to be absolutely obvious, but in many cases, when you sell, it's, it's back to the roots, huh? when you sell a product, you extract the billing part, you extract the content part or the product part, you, you, uh, you uh, extract the technical part and you have a negative figures, that can't work. And very often, the a la carte system is like that. The rest is also pretty obvious. In 12 months, Google, Facebook, Groupon can change the digital world. So three months should be the max to sign a contract and to negotiate. I see a lot of people smiling. So normally it's more six to 12 months. 
And then we started with a, a big major company uh, six, uh, 12 months ago, and Groupon didn't exist at that time. And now we have Groupon, and we are still under contract. And to face pi piracy, always reinvent yourself. So from the Zaoza experience, just what is Zaoza quickly? So our USPs get unlimited access, movie, games, and music. Watch, listen, and play everywhere for only $9.99. So that was the vision. So we started on mobile. We extend on the web and now on the TV. That was the vision of uh, the Vivendi group uh, now five years ago before uh, all the, the, the players uh, we have now, uh, especially the Netflix uh, one in the US, so successful. And that's we are uh, intending to do at the moment. We have recruited since we started three years ago 1.2 million uh, subscribers in France and Germany. So nothing compared to the Netflix story. But at the same time, we are uh, only in two countries ready to uh, accelerate. Just a, a short movie to, uh, because I wanted to make the demo and see how you go from one uh, device to another with music and movie. And it's uh, easier to uh, show it on a DVD today. So it's a true movie, it's not an Hollywood movie, so the, <laughs> the movie has been done by us directly at home where you can see how you synchronize, as everything is synchronized and you go from one device to another by one click, you select an episode, you go on TV, you go back on, a, on your uh, iPhone or whatever, so it's really customer-centric, more than device-centric, 
and you choose whatever the content you want, you share it, and if you have a specific device over the top, then you can get it. Just to finish, uh, what we have learned on Zaoza from, uh, for the video, subscription is more adapted, of course. Multi-device is becoming absolutely crucial. So the cloud, what is called now the cloud computing uh, is essential. And, and you can see that a lot of companies have difficulties to move in the cloud computing because all their systems were very uh, uh, different from one to each other. So having now an open source cloud computing platform is absolutely critical to be uh, very efficient in that field. You pay for one service, not for one service on one device. So it's the people doesn't want to uh, pay once again to watch a movie on the TV or to watch a movie, the same movie on iPad. The top recommendation comes from your friend. Uh, it was like that when I was going at the concert. It was like that uh, when I go to the, the theater. So the super uh, recommended en uh, engine, uh, we don't really uh, trust it will be uh, so successful. But if I can see that Rio is watching a movie I didn't think, I could watch it yesterday night because I know that Rio is a, an expert in a, I don't know, a Western from the 70s, then I will just uh, click and, and watch the, the Western. On video, quality is often more important than freshness compared to music. Uh, music, you, the, 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 the freshness is very important. On video, what we have seen is that the quality is often more important. People who play online over the top, they are all above 30 years old. So uh, we try to pay a lot of attention to the content uh, because when you are 20, you don't pay over the top. And of course, CRM and data consumption. So having a platform that is able to capture all the data, what the people are doing is absolutely essential uh, to, uh, <coughs> for the anti-churn uh, because the subscription model works uh, with a, a lifetime value and then an anti-churn. Okay, thank you. Sorry, I was a little bit long. Thank you. In the interest of time, let's let's jump right into it. So, Rio, why don't you tell us uh, for the audience that's under thirty that doesn't want to pay, you can show us what alternative Vivo's got for them. Okay, great. Uh, again, thank you, Robert, and uh, to the MIP family for having me here. My name is Rio Carif. I'm the uh, CEO of uh, a company called Vivo. Uh, some people outside of North America may not know uh, who Vivo is, or you may know that we're th that company that has all those ads on YouTube uh, around music videos. But at the end of the day, I'm, I'm going to tell you a story uh, about uh, why we created the company, um, what we're trying to accomplish, and, and fundamentally how we're trying to restore the premium value, the premium luster around music online. Um, so what Vivo is, is it's a, it's a distribution company that's been formed by the world's largest music companies um, in order to make music, and specifically music and videos, available on all connected platforms for the benefit of every person on the planet who loves music. So you may ask yourself, why is uh, this company necessary? It wasn't hard to get music on the web before. Music videos were everywhere. Uh, why is this necessary? So what we're trying, the, the answer to that question, I'll, I'll, I'll phrase it in the form of, um, you know, uh, from, from the perspective of the content creator, from the perspective of the artist, from the perspective of the songwriter for, or the content licensor. Um, so uh, to go back about five, uh, five years ago, I was running the digital business in North America for Universal Music Group, the world's largest music company. And what we saw was that we had licensed our, our music videos to dozens of, of businesses on the web, everybody from YouTube to MTV to Microsoft to Yahoo to MySpace to many other services. And we saw an incredible explosion happening really from uh, back as early as 2001 all the way through to the present day, uh, consumer interest and consumer adoption of a video on the web was exploding, no surprise there. But what we saw was that monetization uh, was going in the opposite direction. We saw volume increasing substantially, but we saw the revenue per stream, the revenue per viewer, uh, any metric around monetization of our content was declining as volume was increasing. And it wasn't, uh, it wasn't a healthy trend because when you got into the details, what we saw was that Advertisers, remember this is, this is uh, people who are watching music videos on the web uh, where it's free to the consumer and there are brands and advertisers who help sponsor that. Advertisers weren't perceiving music and weren't perceiving music videos to be valuable. They weren't perceiving the audience to be valuable. 
And so there was a big disconnect where we saw, you know, for example, major sporting events and, and the season premiere of new television shows attracting significant advertising dollars um, due in part to the scarcity and promotion of, of that audience. And what we saw was that music uh, was, was almost treated like a second-class citizen with regards to the, the, uh, the, the level of monetization. And in fact, you know, we saw the, the average you know, CPM sold around music videos in 2005, 2007 uh, was really in the, uh, you know, in the same ballpark of uh, teeth whitening and liposuction and, and a lot of low value ad network uh, content. You wouldn't see premium broadcast quality ads. You wouldn't see premium broadcast quality rates, even though the audience uh, around music um, was, was equal to or greater than um, what, what we would see with television programming. So long story short, we wanted to create a, a distribution platform that would harness the global enthusiasm for music and, uh, but, but work to restore the premium value of our content. So we wanted to do it in a way that was compatible with the physics of the web uh, to, and compatible with the way consumers and users want to use the internet. So we wanted to figure out how do we work with YouTube, right, where the majority of music videos were being uh, discovered and consumed. We wanted to figure out how do we work with Facebook? How do we work with every place on the web that has music? How do we work on every device? How do we do this in a way, how do we make music more valuable and charge more money to advertisers? How do we make more money per play without hurting the artist, without hurting the fan? Right? In the old world, you would create value through scarcity. You would take music off of YouTube and take music off of MTV and take music off of AOL, and you would put it in one place and say, this is the only place you can get it, and thus it's valuable and scarce. But that's not a friendly strategy for the consumer. That's not a good thing to tell an artist, that, to tell Lady Gaga that she can't work with YouTube or to tell Lady Gaga that, that she can't have videos on her site. That's not a successful approach. So. Um, what we did was we figured out uh, that, that Vivo would be the distribution platform which would enable music videos and music programming to be made available everywhere, on every TV, on every website, on every platform, on every mobile platform, and that we would aggregate the most music content, the most premium music content from the world's largest music companies and make it available everywhere. We would work to improve the experience, we would work to improve the quality, uh, but we would take the friction and the hassle and the headache out of licensing music and working with music because for those who've ever tried to work with record companies or license music, it's actually a little bit challenging, a little bit difficult. And there are many services on the web that should have music but don't, right, because of the, the friction that's been there before. So long story short, we have about 25,000 videos from just under 8,000 artists from the majority of the world's music companies, and we provide that content uh, in many places on the web. This is just a small sampling. So on YouTube, uh, if you search for Lady Gaga, Beyonce, Justin Bieber, any of these artists, the official videos uh, will be provided by Vivo. Um, on Facebook, we power the official videos for over 300 artist pages. Uh, we power videos for AOL, for BET, for CBS, for Last.fm, for many other services uh, today in North America. Um, we also make them available across many platforms. So it's not just the web, it's across iPad, connected television, Android, iPhone, Google TV, and many other TV and mobile platforms uh, that are in development today. So again, our, our rights are, are, um, are multi-platform, our rights are, are global in scope, and our ambition is to make music available to every person on the planet who loves it. Um, from a scale perspective, you know, we've built some significant scale by aggregating uh, this audience across these different platforms. So how we make more money around music videos and music programming is we increase the distribution, but we represent that platform and those users to advertisers with, with one face. So we basically say that only one company can provide you Procter & Gamble, you Unilever, with the largest uh, audience of passionate music fans across any connected platform, whether it's television, whether it's mobile, whether it's YouTube, whether it's AOL, whether it's Yahoo, whether it's anywhere else, you know, Vivo can control the distribution of that programming and the access to that audience through premium advertising. Um, so right now in the U.S. we have about 55 million uh, unique video viewers. 
It's about 30%, about one in three uh, penetration of, of all internet users in the US, about 45% of all uh, video viewers in the 18 to 34 demographic. Uh, we're the second largest video viewing platform in North America, only behind YouTube. Um, so we have significant scale uh, across the business. I won't spend a lot of time going through that. We have our own site. We also syndicate and distribute everywhere. Uh, everything's in high definition. Everything is um, uh, optimized for the cleanest, most highest quality experience possible. Um, our mobile business, I'll talk a little about this real quick, uh, is only about uh, six months old. Uh, in the U.S., we have about four million active users uh, today with Vivo on iPhone, Vivo on Android, Vivo on iPad. Uh, right now, we're at about 40 million uh, monthly streams uh, through mobile. It's doubling every 30 days in terms of the volume we're seeing through there. Um, and uh, we are, uh, in, in context, you know, that's, we're doing about 900 million streams per month uh, in the U.S., uh, about 2.5 billion streams per month worldwide. Um, so mobile is a small uh, percentage of the business, but it's growing uh, the fastest rate. Um, working, uh, our business is not just about music videos. We, we brought music videos together in order to start to aggregate and build the audience, but we have a significant investment in original programming. So our idea was don't just rest on music videos, build on top of them. Help to reinvent the future of music programming. There's a renaissance period of new interactive music videos going on right now. Um, we have access to great artists and access to fans and incredible distribution. So let's create new programming on top of that. So uh, what that means is that we're, we're created uh, new shows uh, where music and food and music and fashion and music and sports and music and, uh, and, and travel all intersect together. So uh, we're very focused on music. We're not trying to have every movie and television show. We're not trying to do every sports and news event. Uh, but I'll give you an example, Vivo Stylized is all about the fashion of music, how artists put together their looks, how fans are inspired by it, and we create new programming on top of that. Um, we also have a live event business, so we produce and co-produce and distribute and co-distribute live programming across the Vivo platform. Um, we uh, uh, produced and distributed over 25 live events last year. Um, including partnerships with YouTube and American Express, uh, a, a live platform called Unstaged. We streamed the World Cup opening kickoff ceremony um, last June. We have a partnership with CBS called Live on Letterman. Um, and I'll show you a sneak preview in a second of some of our, our, our the new live events that we're, we're producing. So about three weeks ago, um, we, there was a conference in Texas called South by Southwest. Um, we put on a big show uh, with Jay-Z and Kanye West. And uh, we filmed this, uh, this show with 15 high-def cameras and three cranes. And we're launching this, this concert uh, across the Vivo platform worldwide at the end of April. And so this is a, an example, again, of we're not just a music video, video platform. Um, we're in the live music business. We're in the original programming business. But fundamentally, we're in the business of aggregating the world's largest audience of passionate music fans and representing that audience to brands who are interested in reaching that audience at a premium price so that they can't shop around and pay the lowest price for music. We think music is, is up there uh, with sports and television shows as, as really one of one or two things on the planet that can aggregate and build an audience of this significant scale and passion. Um, I'll talk a little bit about our advertising business uh, in a second, but I want to share you. So, so these are rough cuts I'll show you. Uh, these are um, uh, these are not launched yet. This is not final audio, but you can get a sense of the, the quality of our productions. Uh, so these are, uh, again, this is, this is launching at the end of April, so these have never been seen anywhere else before. So this is, these are snapshots of, the, uh, of our uh, Kanye West and Jay-Z show here. So again, 13 HD cameras, three cranes. This is the high school marching band. You can see there's 5,000 people lined up outside to get in uh, to the show. And again, we, we focus significantly and extensively on quality of the experience. So this is all 8, 1080p, multi-channel audio. I'll just go through that. So you get the idea. Um, 
So music builds a, an audience like no other. Today we have over 350 brand advertisers on the Vivo platform. We have a 60 person sales force in the US alone just selling Vivo to premium brands. Um, we're, uh, we have brands represented uh, on the Vivo platform from every category. Um, we're very focused on uh, reconditioning the marketplace, that music is premium, that music is valuable. We're not trying to say you can get access to this audience and this content on the cheap. So it's not something that you can get in at a five, ten, fifteen dollar CPM range. This is in the broadcast quality. This is in the broadcast uh, arena in terms of the value that we're providing. But we're in the process of reconditioning the marketplace from a perception where music was uh, ubiquitous, where music was a commodity, where music was something you can get on the cheap, where music was low quality. And we're really trying to say, if you want to reach 60 million people, if you want to reach 50 million people in the 18 to 34 demo, then there's now only one company that you can really buy this from. Um, so just to wrap up, uh, we've had some good reviews of the platform, and uh, that's who we are. So this year we'll be launching in a number of European markets and uh, bringing Vivo to uh, more people outside of North America and uh, outside, of, outside of YouTube. And um, I look forward to answering questions and being on the panel. Thank you. Thanks for that. The, um, so there, there are two themes that are coming out this morning already, just in our first few sessions. The first one is, uh, uh, to use Rio's term, reconditioning the marketplace to the value of the programming that we create. This is a very important point, and you've heard it from the previous panel as well. The idea that for more than 10 years, the online audience has been massively undervalued by advertisers and it's the job of the content creators to figure out some means of reinforcing that value perception. So that's certainly something that both Zauza and Vivo are doing, and I think in innovative ways. Uh, you know, certainly the program, the, the original program you're doing, when I worked at MTV back in the day, that was something, that was a project that MTV would have undertaken. And so it's kind of cool today to see Vivo is a, in, in sort of new renaissance of music on the web is taking the lead in creating original programming. Now, if I could summarize in the few minutes that we have left, uh, the value proposition, Cedric, of Zauza is that you offer a bundle of unlimited video, games, music. Is, and the video consists of movies, TV shows from broadcast television, cable, and so forth. Uh, all of that, unlimited access for a monthly price, a flat monthly price of under 10 euros. And, and Vivo's value proposition is not all of the music videos, but the music videos from the three biggest record labels, certainly, certainly the biggest collection by far of music videos, but you offer that really on the platform that any customer wants to get it to and, and actually package it up in a way that's appropriate for those different platforms. If someone wants to get it at Vivo.com, they can certainly do that or on your big YouTube channel, but if they want to access that from one of your many distribution partners, uh, then they can, certainly, uh, they can certainly do that as well. Have I got it right? Yeah, that, that, that's correct. Which of those two strategies is the better strategy? The idea of creating this sort of paid bundle of services that reaches under a million people or an open service that's available on many different platforms that reaches 55 million people? If I can give my, sense, my two cents, I, I think the, the, solu the answer is they're both appropriate for, uh, for different people at different times. And what I've learned in my experience is that there's no such thing as one solution that meets the needs of everybody. Right. Um, it's, it's human nature to think in terms of, I think, binary absolutes, like everybody will do this or everybody will do that. And I think the reality is there are just different people with different needs at different times in their life uh, and different circumstances. And so the challenge we faced when we created Vivo was that music was everywhere. Um, everybody loves music. Very few people want to buy and pay for it. So how do you get some amount of money from everybody on the planet who loves music? And the answer to that on, an, on one perspective is with their time and attention. Right. Is let's, there's a, a significant audience of people who love music. We're not harnessing that audience appropriately to make enough money from it. So let's hijack that traffic and hijack that audience and funnel it into a premium business model. Um, I think the, the, the healthy business is one that has multiple revenue streams and not is, is not dependent on just advertising or just subscription. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think that the solution is both of our models meet the needs of the content owners and the consumers at different times. Are you going to introduce a premium tier then at some point for Vivo? 
I can't say whether we are or we aren't, Sorry. but I think our, I our, our ambition is to have multiple revenue streams and okay. not just one. Fair enough. Now, Cedric, uh, I want to make sure that we're accurately portraying the value prop of Zauza. One thing I learned yesterday, if you go to the Experience Hub, you can see it if you're not from France or Germany, if you haven't seen this great service. It's truly impressive. I'm a huge fan of Netflix. Zauza's even better because it offers games which Netflix doesn't have yet, and music both in albums and in singles. But what I learned yesterday is you can download this stuff. This is not a streaming service. You can actually download it to your device, and if you end your subscription, if you cancel your subscription, you get to keep the music you've downloaded or the video you've downloaded. Did I get that right? Yeah, completely. That's an amazing idea. How on earth did you convince the media companies to let, let you get away with that business model? Uh, fir first of all, we are not as exhaustive as, uh, as Vivo is, for example, on the music. We, uh, that, 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 that's why it's, it's a parallel uh, initiative uh, that cannot be compared, because right. I think uh, Vivo at the moment is really all around music, uh, a lot of exhaustiveness, uh, where we are more in a selection business, where we select uh, mm. certain uh, album, singles, movie, etc. And if people want to get exhaustiveness to find right the right album of the 70s, he needs to go on a, a la carte system. <coughs> it's also uh, uh, because we think there is a lot of people that get completely lost in that system and they want a very simple service to start with where they can get hundreds of movies, hundreds of singles to start with. On the movie side, the exhaustiveness is, uh, is less important than on the, on the music side. So you, yes, you get it right, you can download it, you can keep it. So it's really customer centric because for me it was obvious that when you buy uh, a CD, <laughs> you own the CD. Yeah. So it's not only streaming, it can be streaming as well uh, on the movie. So it depends on the device. On TV you need streaming because you can't wait uh, 20 minutes to get, uh, to get the, the movie on in your TV and you don't bring your TV in the train or in the plane. On an iPad you need to uh, download in a cache or on the, on the PC if you want to watch the movie or listen to music in the plane. For both services you're completely dependent on your programming from major companies. I, I know you're in the original production business now but it's relatively small. Most of your catalog comes from existing companies. Now, 10 years ago, those companies were so adamantly opposed to any type of innovation that they were shutting down services like mp3.com that were attempting to innovate. What do you think has changed? What, what has changed in their perspective in the last 10 years? I, I think from, from the perspective of the music industry, obviously what's changed is a significant decline right. in the business of selling recorded music. And I think what that's created uh, which is uh, both a, a good, which I think really is a fundamentally good thing, is it's created an, an, an environment of, of let's take more chances, of let's invest in the future of our business. When I, when I was at Universal, um, I, I, I realized that nobody is responsible for our future but ourselves, mm -hmm. right? But the, the prevailing attitude in the industry, I felt, was maybe Apple will figure this out for us. Maybe Google will launch a music service. Right. Maybe Amazon MP3s will be a big hit and then we'll have multiple retailers. Maybe something else will come out of the woodwork that will create an entirely new billion dollar business, right? But that's, a, in my opinion, a poor strategy right. to rely on others. Wishful thinking. Right, to save the day. And so I said, well, we have to be accountable for our destiny, responsible for our future, and invest in creating new experiences because Apple's not focused on saving the music business. Google's not focused on saving the music business, right? So let's right. figure out how to make new revenue streams from the passion of everybody <coughs> who loves music without trying to sell it to them because clearly they don't want to buy it. So you had to stitch together a coalition of companies and are they part owners in Vivo? Are they, is it a joint venture in that way? Vivo is a joint venture owned by Universal Music Group and Sony Music Entertainment and then we have licensing relationships with, with dozens other of other companies. Got it. And with respect to, to Zauza and, and Vivendi Mobile Entertainment. How is that? That's a that's a division of, Vivendi, of Vivendi, right? Yeah, that's a division of Vivendi. I think wha what I see from the the, the content side, and uh, to just to add something mm -hmm. on uh, what Rio was saying, and uh, where I fully agree, of course, is that I I see less fear at the moment uh, that uh, we had probably five seven years ago, and it's also because probably people like Rio and I used to work in the music industry. We change, so a lot of people are have moved to telco, to content, to uh, distribution, etc. So I think when Rio is discussing with the music industry now, people can trust that Rio is also there to improve mm -hmm. the music industry. 
Same when I'm discussing with my old colleague from Universal Music, uh, so that's trust. the same. Yeah. And I think this is also where a group like Vivendi, where they own the telco, the content, etc., and when they cannot make the telco or uh, grow uh, and try to kill the content business, is also helpful to get the trust of the people. And when you get the trust, there is less fear. You can sign a contract in, but I would say three months, but six months, uh, and it was when 12, when uh, we were with uh, Rio at Universal Music, because we had a lot of fear. Right. And that has really started to change. Well, we saw a little bit of that in the previous panel. The, the panelists there, before we spoke, said to me, if, uh, if TV companies can't profitably produce content, they're going to get out of the business, right? Companies that don't make profit have a habit of going out of business. So perhaps what we're starting to see then is more support towards resurrecting or rebuilding some, some, some new type of business model that will preserve the value. To, again, to use your, your phrase, recondition the market. In the case of Vivo, uh, the content's been aggregated under one roof in order to recondition the perception of advertisers. Consumers have access to it from many different points. Uh, what you're seeking to do, though, with, with Zaza, Cedric, is you're conditioning the consumer to say, well, if you, if you want the convenience and the ease of use and access across all devices and the ability to download and play back offline, it's all that is very valuable to consumers. Not necessarily the value prop being the content offering, but it's the access to the content on the terms that the consumer wants. You say, okay, great, we'll facilitate that for you mm -hmm. for a fee. So in one way, you're conditioning advertisers, and your business is conditioning consumers, each a little bit differently, slightly different business models. Spot on. OK, great. <laughs> you know, uh, I'd love to get a question from the floor. And I don't see the Twitter stream. I realize it's behind me here. It puts me at a distinct disadvantage. Uh, yeah, go for it, Stuart. I don't know how much Rio can talk about MySpace and rumors about buying that, but how can you talk about more widely social and how social fits into Vivo? Because that's been quite a running theme. Yeah, I can't comment on, on the rumors and speculation, but I, I can say that, um, you know, for, like, I'll give you an, an example. You know, m everything we do as a, you know, we, we try to integrate and, and be a part of the, 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 the social web. Um, so, for example, on Facebook, um, we don't promote or talk about Vivo on Facebook because nobody cares about that, right? But, but 32 million people care about Lady Gaga on Facebook, and so we wanted to make sure that um, that we're integrating her videos properly into her own page and into her own environment, and that we're making sure that that can be monetized by advertisers, but made available on terms that the artist is comfortable with. So if the artist wants to premiere a video there, we've been premiering a lot of videos on Facebook recently, the artist has control over how that works, and maybe you have to fan the artist or friend the artist in order to watch the premiere, but it's free and it's sponsored by advertisers, and we can, we, we, we're really just trying to make sure that every decision we make at Vivo is, is in line with what's best for the person who loves music, what's best for the artist who creates music, right? And we're not thinking about how do we protect an old model, how do we sell more CDs, how do we get people to do something that they don't want to do, how do we force them to go somewhere they don't want to go, right? If they want to go to YouTube, they should go to YouTube. If they want to go to uh, the artist's website or Facebook, they should go to those places. The music should be free to ride the social web and, and there shouldn't be any restrictions or hurdles that prevent that. So that's our philosophy. Okay. You know, we're going to move on to the next discussion now. So I want to thank Cedric and Rio for joining us. This has been a really fun conversation for me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And if I can